It's just before 6am on Saturday, a few kilometres from Gaza. Hamas gunmen arrive at a community called Kibbutz Biri. They're blocked until these gates open for a car. The terrorists kill the occupants and enter. Australian grandmother Galit Kaboni is inside. Born in Sydney, she raised her three children in Israel, where she worked as a librarian. Another Beery resident, Canadian Israeli woman Vivian Silva. She also has Australian connections. Melbourne businessman Ron Finkel has known her for 51 years. She has been a social activist and dedicated to the cause of peace. It's part of her DNA. Vivian Silva has worked with and helped Palestinians all her life, including as a volunteer driver for Ron Finkel's Australian-funded charity. An organisation which has volunteer drivers that daily pick up Palestinian children who are critically ill and takes them with their carers to hospitals in Israel for medical treatment that they cannot get at the moment in Gaza. As the attack unfolded on Saturday morning, she was on the phone to her son, Yonatan, in Tel Aviv. It was clear that something really unusual is happening with the incursion, but we kept in, in, in touch until uh, I heard over the phone um, a lot of gunshots outside her window where she was hiding in her safe room. Uh, so we decided to stop the talking on the phone um, so she, they won't hear her. Outside, a Palestinian reporter had followed the gunman into the community. He live streamed the attack. And we are in the middle of the settlement, and the fighters here were in direct engagement. And we corresponded uh, through WhatsApp until she wrote me they're inside the house. And then communications uh, stopped. Some of the Beery residents were led away. The Washington Post reports it has verified videos showing this group of hostages was killed just a few metres further down the road. When Israeli forces eventually made it into Biri, they found at least 109 residents had been killed, including many children. The scenes inside shocked those who thought they were unshockable. We went into Kibbutz Be'eri and we saw the, the rally, what was done to the families, to the children. I thought I saw everything, but something like that I never saw. The Australian grandmother, Galit Kaboni, was among those killed. Our sympathies go to uh, the family and loved ones of Ms Carboni. We unequivocally condemn uh, these atrocities and the attacks on innocent civilians that occurred. Jonathan Zagan grew up in this tiny community and knows many of the dead and missing. Yeah, the whole community is, uh, is wrecked. A lot of people killed, a lot of people kidnapped. Um, and a lot of people are just torn, you know, the survivors are torn as well. There is no sign of his mother. As of mid-afternoon Israel time on Sunday, it became clear that most likely that Vivian has been kidnapped and taken hostage to Gaza. That's the indication we're getting. It's, uh, it's not confirmed officially. Nobody from the authorities talked to me. So that's our indication. And I hope that to be true, because the alternative is, uh, is worse. As Israel responds with airstrikes, Hamas has threatened to execute hostages 
in retaliation for the deaths of Palestinian civilians. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. That's what I. That's why I'm calling on the Israeli government to negotiate. I don't think they took the people in order to kill them. They could have killed them there. They took them for leverage and um, and to make deals. But Israel seems in no mood for deals. Hundreds of Palestinians have died since Saturday in Gaza, where airstrikes continue to level buildings. What I saw in the street is a vast destruction caused by comprehensive targeting by the Israeli occupation forces. Palestinian journalist Akram Lasatari is in Gaza. He says one strike buried his neighbor's family. Some of them are still alive under the rubbles and they are now trying to retrieve them. Why? They are not militants. They are not engaging in the fights. They are not fighters. They are civilians. A ground assault seems imminent. I don't see any end for this, and I see the suffering is exacerbating. Vivian Silver's friend, Ron Finkel, is hoping for restraint. Whatever response that Israel is undertaking, it should be with as much precision as they can to address the perpetrators and avoid the population. Jonathan Zagan hopes negotiations could save his mother and the other hostages. So it would be a shame if we couldn't uh, comply out because of uh, because of I don't know aggressive politics or because uh, I I just want them to come back alive.